I can almost guarantee that this will be bottom of your list uh, to revise for GCSE physics, uh, especially for paper two, but you need to make sure you know how to answer these questions to do with practical skills. So today we're going to look at a few exam questions to do with variables, uh, how to write risk assessments. We're going to look at graphs, um, random and systematic errors, which come up all the time, uh, and then also look at how to calculate uncertainties um, and also key terms like precise and accurate, what they mean and how to use them in your answers. So the first practical question we're going to look at is a required practical. Um, I'm going to try and make them as based around paper two as possible, but all this stuff applies to any physics paper. So this required practical is to do with infrared radiation. Essentially, pour boiling water into a cube. Uh, you measure the infrared coming off each side to find out which is the best emitter. Now, this question asks us for what is the control variable. So that is the thing that you need to make sure stays the same. In this question, there's a couple of options you could talk about. Uh, well, number one is the starting temperature of the water, and number two is the distance from the detector uh, to the cube. Now you can't say things like the water or the distance. You've got to be really specific with variables questions. So those would be two to put on your answer for that question. Also in this question, um, we're asked to talk about a safety manner, matter. And now uh, this question says, suggest how the risk of harm could be reduced. So we could say something like, use a funnel to boil boring wa boiling water. Notice how I didn't say something like, be careful, because um, you're kind of assuming you're doing that in an experiment. It's not specific enough. Okay, And you can't say, don't burn. You can't say, don't pour it on your skin. You've got to say, how do you stop that happening? Now, in general, you could be asked in any practical about a risk assessment. A risk assessment contains a hazard. So what could uh, what is the thing that could go wrong? Um, a risk, uh, what uh, effect could it have on you? And a precaution. So what could you do about it? The last question was a precaution. Um, this question is about the Hooke's Law practical with springs and masses. And it says you should include a risk assessment for one hazard. So I'm going to give a couple to work with here. One of them is that the masses and the risk is they could fall on your feet. So what we do is you do the experiment uh, in the center of the table or do it away from the edge of the table. Another example of risk assessment, again, not using the phrases, be careful, we've got to say what is actually going to happen and how do we, what do we do about it. Another example would be uh, the spring itself. So the hazard would be the spring or the spring snapping. Uh, the risk is that it snaps into your eye. So the precaution would be we wear goggles. Okay, so sounds easy, but don't lose marks. Make sure you read the question carefully when you're asked about safety. Now, in this practical as well, uh, we're going to talk about the graph briefly. Um, there's a part two to this question. It says, um, describe how the graph supports the student's conclusion that the two things are directly proportional. Now, it's two marks. So we've got to say two things. The first one is to say well, the graph is a straight line and it goes through the origin. The origin is the zero, zero point down the bottom left. And part two, or the second mark, is we say, as one thing doubles, the other thing doubles. In this case, it's force doubling means extension doubles, okay? That would be the answer if there wasn't a graph as well. So for two marks, you've got to say two things. When we're talking about graphs, um, sometimes they aren't straight lines. Sometimes they're not directly proportional. You've got to be able to spot it with a graph like this, okay? If you put a ruler up against um, the line, um, you should be able to spot it's more of a curve than a straight line, okay? Um, so in that case, you draw a curved line of best fit like the one here, okay? Got to be smooth. Don't sketch it like you're in art. And uh, one smooth line of best fit is going to get you your mark here as opposed to kind of forcing it into a straight line. Okay, so that's graphs done. Uh, next, we're going to look at random and systematic errors, which, as I mentioned at the start, come up a lot. Um, so whenever you see a question about types of error, a type of error is either going to be random or systematic. And this question is about the reflection or refraction practical in separate science. So a random error um, is the one here that it says uh, will cause each angle of reflection to have a range of values. So random error is a one-off error, usually caused by a person. Um, and it's one-off, but it could make that answer higher or lower, basically. So um, the opposite it's that it's a systematic which affects every reading in the same way so the fact it's got a range of values means that it's affecting all readings slightly differently so it must be a random error and what the student might have done in this one they might not have measured from the center of the ray or they might have nudged the the ray box or the protractor uh, to cause that to happen now these random errors how do we reduce their effect now it doesn't say how to re stop them happening it says how to reduce their effect and this is the same mark scheme for every practical so i haven't even told you about where this practical came from because there's the same for each time it comes up. Every single time, two marks, what you say is you say, take repeat readings, and then you identify anomalies, and you don't include them when calculating a mean. When you calculate a mean and ignore your anomalies.
okay? And now, almost always in questions like this, there won't be any repeats. So the answer, we take repeats, identify anomalies, remove from the means. And what that does as a follow-up, um, sometimes they ask you, uh, why is that a good thing? It improves accuracy of your results. Um, and what accuracy is how close to the true value uh, you can get. So that's how we work out uh, how to improve accuracy um, and also to reduce the effect of random errors. Now, another thing that comes up relatively frequently um, is how to calculate uncertainty, okay? The actual calculation itself is really easy. You just need to know how to do it. So what we do is we calculate a range of values and then divide by two. So in this case up here, I've got 1.9, 1.7, 2.2, and 1.4. I find the range, so the highest minus the lowest, and then just divide by two. So that turns out to be 0.8 over two, which is 0.4, two marks, okay? And how you represent that is a little positive or negative sign before the 0.4 to show it could go up by 0.4 or down by 0.4. And the last question we're going to look at um, is to look at these readings here. And the question says, um, we, uh, this table cannot be used to show that infrared radiation gives precise readings. Precise is if you're firing darts at a dartboard and they're very close together. They don't have to be accurate, but they'd be close together um, or close to the mean value. Okay, that's what precise means. Now, with our measurements here, you've not got any repeat, so there has to be repeat readings for it to be precise. Otherwise, we don't know if they're close together, if there aren't actually any of them. Okay, so what we'd say here um, is that there's uh, no repeat readings or no repeats uh, taken uh, to find out if the results are um, close together or not. So I hope that was helpful. Um, like I said, make sure you revise those key terms from practical skills because you're almost guaranteed that some of them will come up in paper too.